Hey folks, Judd Zolgad, Andrew Kramer from the Winter Park area, 1500ESPN.com. Thanks for coming. A Wednesday before the Vikings home opener against the Cleveland Browns, both teams 0-2. Several storylines to get to. Vikings coming off a loss to the Chicago Bears on Sunday. But let's start with Cleveland and Brandon Whedon, their starting quarterback, is out for Sunday's game. Okay, he's been sacked a lot. He's hurt. It's not that surprising. What is surprising is veteran Jason Campbell won't start for the Browns and Andrew, what on earth is going on with them going with their number three quarterback? Well, we're not too sure. Uh, at, over here at uh, Winter Park, uh, Leslie Frazier said they were actually preparing for Jason Campbell, obviously the number two quarterback. He had started for Oakland for numbers of years. Uh, uh, he's been a starter elsewhere as well with Washington, and now they go with this Brian Hoyer who has uh, been in the league for five years. He's had one start, and that was uh, week 17, actually, the end of last season with the Arizona Cardinals. So uh, not much tape to look at over him. Frazier said we're going to have to go back and erase what we were doing for Campbell and kind of come up with a new plan, but mm -hmm. not much to come up with with a guy who's played five years in the league and has had one start. So uh, defensive players and uh, have just kind of said there's not much really to go about with this. There's not much you can really change. Uh, we're going to go all along like if it's Brandon Whedon still out there, so we'll see. Just a weird deal, too, yeah. because while the element of surprise might be nice, Jason Campbell's not bad. I mean, Jason Campbell played for the Bears last season. As you just said, he started for a bunch of teams. Yeah. If this is the Browns thinking, oh, we're going to surprise the Vikings, they're complete idiots. So I hope there's something that they know that we don't know for their sake. But I will say this. In looking at this Viking schedule now, mm -hmm. having seen Pittsburgh play Monday night against Cincinnati yeah. and, and knowing what we know against Cleveland, if the Vikings don't come back from London going into the bye week at 500, something's gone really wrong. These are two eminently winnable games. Oh, very much so. And really look for the defensive line to step up in these two games. As you had said, Brandon Wayne was sacked a, a league high 11 times in these first two weeks. Uh, Steelers are without their center, Pouncey, uh, to an ACL injury. Their offensive line looked bad against mm -hmm. the Bengals on Monday night. So if there's going to be one area that you want to see them capitalize and turn the ball over and win games, it's going to be on that D-line that they're known to be so dominant. Storyline number two for me from the press, conference, uh, press conferences today, Andrew, would be this. Christian Ponder gets up there and is asked about the uh, third down and goal from the four-yard line in Chicago, which led to a Vikings field goal, which at the time gave him a six-point lead. Vikings eventually lose the game. And Ponder said, well, I got up there and I had a play to run, and that was the play I was supposed to run, and I had no check to a pass. And now just to be clear, you know, lots of times a quarterback will go up to the line of scrimmage and will have, let's say, three plays. that yeah. he can, And he can look at the line of scrimmage, observe the defense, I should say, get to the line of scrimmage, observe the defense, and then check to the most appropriate play. This is not an audible. An audible is changing everything. This is a very simple thing. If the Vikings don't have the faith in Christian Ponder to send him to the line of scrimmage and say, look at the Bears' defense and you make the call, I don't get it. Because Christian Ponder has his shortcomings as a quarterback, but he's a smart guy. And we're not talking about changing the play at the 45-yard line and trying a deep pass. We're talking about literally saying, okay, here's how the defense looks. They're going to stop Adrian, so we're going to play action to Adrian and throw to Kyle Rudolph. Just a weird thing, and I, thought, yeah. I found it very interesting, too, that Ponder gave that up, because a lot of times, if you don't want to, guys will say nothing. I think it's very interesting. Ponder sort of, in my view, absolved himself a little bit by saying, hey, I ran the only play I was given. Well, maybe it's a, a little bit of a balance here. Maybe it's a, a lack of maybe trust in Christian and not having that extra yeah. play for him to call. Or maybe perhaps it's an over-trust in Adrian and knowing that if we're going to run a play with Adrian at the goal line, we're not even going to give an option. We don't care how what their defense looks like. We're just going to have him run it. So it is weird that they didn't have that option for Christian. They didn't want Christian to override the play calling or override Adrian's uh, ball carrying. So uh, it's interesting that, again, that you said that he gave that up. And and it wasn't like they had a great play to run. I mean, he ran right in the I mean, line of scrimmage. Yeah. And it wasn't at the one-yard line. You know, if that's Adrian at the one-yard line, then you go for that. I mean, that's what you do. You run him up the middle. But from the four-yard line, yeah, it was the four. a weird deal. Uh, the other storyline, defensively, linebackers. Chad Greenway has not been himself. Now, the linebackers, I think, in the first two games have been bad. But Chad Greenway has gone to Pro Bowls. This guy can yep. play football, yep. and he has not looked good. His tackling has not looked good. Aaron Henderson in the middle is what he is. I'm not sure he should be playing there. Marvin Mitchell, weak side, barely plays because they're in nickel so much. There have been many theories about what's wrong with Chad Greenway, but it sounds like uh, Les Frazier asked about that today and gave a very interesting one. Yeah, from, uh, what he had said was basically that it looks like Chad was maybe – trying to make up for some of the other things that uh, are lacking, perhaps maybe on Aaron's side and nickel. He had said, right. uh, maybe we've seen Chad uh, you know, cheat over to one side or not. And he said, Chad doesn't need to feel like he needs to do more than he's done in the past, which means whether it was Jasper in the middle or anybody else, he shouldn't have to do more than he's done in the past, which got him to those Pro Bowls and made him the great linebacker. 
now. However, it looks like Desmond Bishop might be playing a little bit more too. I don't know if that's going to be in the nickel or just for uh, Marvin's replacement in base, but there's going to be more linebackers mixed in there with Desmond getting some more reps. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with him. He's been proven he can get it done uh, in the middle in a 3-4 scheme. So as a nickel linebacker, it's kind of similar. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see what, he, what the Vikings do with him. But Chad, I don't know if it's uh, an injury or what, but he has not looked the same. Does Bishop definitely play weak side if he plays on Sunday? And, and how many snaps might we expect to see him get, do you think? Well, that's very vague. Frazier was very vague about all that. He just said, like Cordero Patterson, we want to get him more reps. Here's so, my guess. My knows? guess has got to be you play. You're in nickel all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, Marvin Mitchell barely plays. Yeah. My guess is you got to give Desmond Bishop a shot in the middle in the nickel. The thing with Aaron, too, is nobody can be surprised by how he's playing because he played in the nickel in place of Brinkley in the middle last year. Yeah. So he is what he is. And he can play the weak side, and that's fine. But i got to think, Andrew, if you're going to make one change, you know, people want Ponder out, he's not going to be out. No. There's not going to be wholesale changes. But i got to think if you're going to make one significant change, it's going to be, say, Desmond, let's see what you can do. Can, can you stay healthy, and you're going to play the middle in the nickel, and if he can do it, I think Aaron goes back to the weak side and the snaps go way down. Yeah, and it's not even really that much of a change. You don't need to start the guy. No one's saying that you start uh, Bishop over Henderson. All you need to do is put him in there for a series. Put him in there for a series or two. See how he performs. And eventually start him then. Yeah, because he's oh, depending on how they play. Because he's never gotten that much of a chance. He got two snaps in the first two games here, and that was just two snaps near the goal line at Chicago. Uh, and Frazier said, look, they switched to a three-wide set, so we went back to nickel. Well, it doesn't matter. Put him in nickel then for Aaron. So it's interesting to see how much they haven't given Bishop a chance, but it sounds like he's going to get that now. All right, Cordero Patterson, we still expect to see him more Sunday, right? That's what they're Fingers saying. Fingers crossed That's what that, they're uh, saying. that one of the most dynamic offensive players on this team might actually see the football field more than 11 snaps in two games. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. He's got to play more. All right. That is it for us on a Wednesday from Winter Park. Vikings home opener on Sunday against the Cleveland Browns. Both teams are 0-2. He's Andrew Kramer. Check out his work, 1500ESPN.com. Does a great job for us covering the Vikings. I'm Judd Zolga. You can hear me weekdays 9 to 1, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. with Jeff Dubay, 1500ESPN. And also, right after Vikings games, a Viking event line. We want to hear from you. I mean right after games. 651-646-8255 is the number. Thanks for coming to 1500ESPN.com and watching the Vikings video for today.